Penn State has really added an innovative change to lathes with this tail spinner addition. Absolutely. It's, you have a 0% chance without this of maintaining the exact center when you flip that bowl around uh, to work on the other side. And this is going to allow you to maintain precision center every time. It's a great way to go. So Paul and I are both avid turners and have seen a lot of lathes in our days. Um, and Penn State has really jumped the fence on this one. Like th this is one of these like, really? For me. So um, tell people what's, what's cooking. It's called a tail spinner. So there's a little bit of a spoiler alert for people once you think about it. But um, what's going on here? Yeah, it's a total aha in the world of wood turning where basically it gives you the ability, well, the, in its essence gives you the ability to, to attach a chuck onto the, onto the live center. Uh, and, and that's going to allow you to take the, the, uh, your workpiece, spin it around, maintain perfect center, which anyone who's ever tried to get something remounted knows that it's impossible. Now you just plan on skinning a little bit off. Zero percent you're gonna, chance. you're going to lose something on that. The, that's in right. In translation. So there's, there's that benefit. I think also the ability to, I use a vacuum chuck a lot. And that gives you the ability to spin it around, use the chuck on this end, and slide that into the vacuum chuck perfectly centered. And that is that is impossible to do as well. So you're transferring it over so the vacuum chuck is holding it, but it's giving you perfect centricity as you do that. Yeah, so it's the gist of this is that it's not unusual for the tail stock end to spin. What's unusual is that tail stock is spinning. Normally it's a live center, right. um, but the bearings right. on this are here. So that's a one inch eight thread on there. You're going to see more of this in a second. Um, so we can put anything with a number two Morse taper can go in there. Anything with a one inch eight TPI can go on there. So let's look at, um, it's going to make more sense to you when we watch this video where I start here, finish here. When I show you Penn State's new tail spinner, this is going to be your opportunity to go, mind blown! This is a complete rethink of a lathe. When we look at the tail stock, we're used to the idea that this cone will spin. It needs to, because the headstock is driving something. But if you look closely, what's happening here is that this cone is not on its own bearings. It's the tail stock that has bearings. So when I take this out, I have a lot of options here. This is a one inch eight TPI shaft. So I can put a chuck on here. I could put a spur center in here. I could put the cone that was just in here, in here. So it changes the dynamic a lot because it's gonna give me the opportunity to chuck, rechuck, move things around, maintain center as I go from this end to this end, maintaining the mounting device. So what I'm gonna do here is get set up with a bowl on the lathe in a completely different configuration than you're used to seeing. So here's what I've done. I've put my chuck on the tailstock end. Now it's spinning on those tailstock bearings. If you wanna lock this up, there is a knob right here that lets me do that so I could get this to not spin if I needed to. In this case, I do want it to spin. The bowl is mounted on a screw chuck. And on the face of the bowl, I've set that up so it can engage with my drive center. So I'm gonna drive this whole assembly from the headstock end And the way to think about this now is that this is going to be the bottom of my bowl. This is going to be the top of my bowl. So I'm going to do some rounding, I'm going to do some shaping, and then eventually we're going to flip this whole thing around.
So here's where we're at. Outside is pretty well shaped. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to use this lock in order to lock up the tailstock because I don't want it to turn. What I'm going to do is bore with the Forstner bit in order to create the recess for the chuck. You'll see all this come together. Now I'm ready to turn the whole system around. So what we can do here is, tailstock is still locked. And through the magic of tail spinner, we change from this end to this end. off my screw chuck. Get on my jaws. And now we're in a spot you recognize from conventional turning. And at this point, I can come back in and start hollowing. So the thing with tail spinner is that once this is in your shop, you're going to see more and more applications where you can take advantage of what the tail spinner does. So cool product from Penn State, cool addition to the lathe here. It when I saw this, this is so different. You know, when's the last time you saw it? Like the last big change on a lathe right. was was electronic variable speed. Yeah. Um, so innovations in the turning world, you just don't see all that much stuff happening. Yeah. Put me in kind of a tailspin. Oh, God. I got like three good ones in a row. So, so I think, <laughs> you know, we've thought of a couple of cool applications of this. I'd be interested to see if anyone has any additional uh, thoughts on how they would use something like this. It'd be, it'd be very fun to hear from other turners. Um, they're probably doing some work around now to yep. make this happen. Um, but yeah, if they had access to this, what would you do? <laughs>